Good afternoon, everybody. Jeff Gadek here from Leisure Group Travel, and I am happy to have with me Jeff Potter from Manifest Escapes. Jeff, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jeff. It's nice to speak with you. Great. Well, I found a release on your company literally this morning about the new venture that you have, and it really hits home with a concept that we've stumbled on, which is this private group travel of being able to create your own bubble and travel with your own tribe um, to specific destinations. And as I've been exploring your website, it looks as though you were out in front of this concept before COVID-19. Yeah, well, uh, that's very true. Uh, you know, when I, I've been resonating and thinking on this for probably four to five years, and you know, that just gives you time to, kind of share that with your mentors, people that are important to you. And, you know, we start businesses sometimes very emotional. Almost if you fly it, they will come. And um, so uh, it's given me time to think about it. But, you know, what's been interesting is, like I say, just six, nine months ago, if you were uh, to ask me what we're doing, uh, you know, we're, we're about experiential travel, three, four day getaways, uh, close to home. Uh, I think there are so many places, so many experiences that we have in our backyard that have really not been tapped into. Uh, probably like you, I've been very fortunate to travel around the world and some of my favorite trips have truly been three, four day getaways. And so I focused in on that and, um, recognize that smaller group travel, uh, not traveling on tour buses, that type of thing, which is a good thing, but not really for the audience we're after. So uh, these are three, four day getaways. Our target audience is really what I would characterize as the active adult. That could be anyone from 35 to 65, 70. You know, we're, we're not climbing El Capitan, but we're getting you outdoors. Uh, whitewater rafting, fly fishing, golf, just things that, um, you know, allow people culinary trips. People, it allows them to explore. And we recognized very early on that private aviation had to be a component of this. So, you know, we could get you there. We want to get you there within a couple hours, get you home within a couple hours. And that just means more time, you know, experiencing the outdoors and those that we curate on behalf of all our members. So when you look at that and you look at today, it's kind of the same, you know, the, the same foundation we, are, we have built upon. So we haven't had to do uh, a pandemic pivot, as I call it. But with that said, we are all so very, very cognizant of, you know, the safety and security of our members as we, we begin travel. And uh, we'll do uh, whatever it takes to make people feel comfortable. Absolutely. So we talk a little bit about your experience leading up to this adventure. I know you've been involved in the travel industry. What component? I have. I have. I was, uh, I'm truly Jeff, the American dream. I uh, started as an aircraft cleaner back in the early 80s for the uh, old frontier, I call it. And, uh, you know, at that stage in life, in your early 20s, you, you're like a sponge and you seek out information and what's going on, that type of thing. Uh, I quit college and accepted a job as a ticket agent for the Old Frontier. And it's, it was that exploration and that blessing that I was always found everywhere along my career path of finding good, strong mentors uh, who were willing to give time, uh, their own time, and help educate a young kid who wanted to learn more. And so I went through probably, I think, six or seven airlines, ultimately arrived at the new frontier in 1995, when they had five aircraft, 300 employees, much like most early stage companies, the mission statement was the same, and that's called Survive. And uh, Survive does, is a very, very powerful mission statement. People do things uh, that they don't normally do. It's all pitch in, it's all help. And um, I got to see that company grow uh, by the time I left as CEO, uh, to over 6,500 employees, 70 airplanes, it was just a great ride. So, you know, uh, it was just a great classroom. 
the world obviously has changed, certainly commercial aviation, even pre-COVID. Um, but then I just sought out other opportunities and other challenges, both personally and professionally especially. And I was afforded the opportunity to join Exclusive Resorts, which is uh, a fantastic destination club owned by Steve Case. And went there, and so I went from this commodity business, uh, and as much as I'd like to say we employees were great at Frontier, everything was a little different. Um, and I went to this very high touch, white glove, all service oriented uh, club. And what I found there were certain things that are very pertinent to what I'm doing now. And that was service, 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 uh, you know, uh, exceed expectations, but at least meet those expectations. And found out, uh, you know, we had 3,700 members during my tenure. Um, it was really focused on the top half to 1% in terms of household demographics income. And, but what I found, we, we developed a program called Once in a Lifetime, which was experiential based. Um, and we took people around the world. This is a little bit different because what I did find there was I'm very fond of recurring revenue, subscription model, the social elements of a club. Very hard to quantify, but qualitatively speaking, I can tell you uh, I won't do this any other way. And so that kind of encourages and creates that stickiness of like-minded travelers. Uh, but what was missing is these shorter getaways, um, you know, whether it's fear of missing out, FOMO, and you know, I certainly suffer from that. I think I'm more important than what I really am. And most companies that I've had the opportunity to run, run much, much better with me not there. And so, um, uh, and we saw that by the way, exclusive people love these long getaways with families, et cetera, but they want that optionality. So that's what we're targeted at. Uh, it's something that not too many companies do. Uh, knowing that we had to pair it up with private aviation component uh, our goal there, by the way, is not only from a service standpoint, ultimately our goal is to expand that private aviation element to where people go, well, it's a private aircraft, so I can't afford it. What we're trying to do is expand that audience to the top one to three percent, to the top five to eight percent. Okay. And um, we believe very strongly we can get there. In fact, I know we can get there. That's really the, the interesting element of this whole process is it adds a degree of exclusivity to the process. You know, we can all visit five-star resorts and whether we're charging it on our credit card or we have it in the bank account, but the access to that level of transportation that so few people get to. I, I've been in the travel industry my whole life. I've never been on a private airplane before. So, um, you know, it's one of my aspirational goals to, to be. So I, I think that's a great idea. Well, it's an important element, not only because it, I'm like you, uh, I've had the opportunity to fly uh, private a couple times. And, you know, it is aspirational for, for most everybody. And it doesn't have to be. And plus, it's so critical to our offering because once again, you know, if you think about it, Jeff, we go on these seven day trips, six day trips, and you really, if you really dissect it, one day's travel, another day's travel back. And so a six day becomes a four day. Well, we're offering three, four day trips, but we're getting you there and back. So you don't have what we characterize as a travel day, going through commercial airports, having to connect because many of the places we're taking folks are somewhat off the beaten path. Um, our perfect trip is really meets, try, we try to meet two criteria. One, that we can go to Jeff uh, as a member and say, or, and you look at one of these trips that we curate for you um, and you get to select and you go, you know what, I never thought of that. That, that would be the highlight to us. Uh, and the second piece is just the fact the matter is, you know, this is affordable. I'm traveling with like-minded people. And um, I, I, I like being part of something that, that is special. So those are, those are elements to us. And, you know, we always have to answer the question. I know you have to do the same, which is, okay, I see this offering, but can I do this myself? Well, first of all, again, study after study after study, 
is you'll find that two thirds, three quarters of the US consumer won't even go on vacation because they don't want to plan. So you'll hear a lot, oh, I like to do this myself. Well, some do, uh, but the vast majority of the US consumer does not. And so they want that, lack of better terms, that good housekeeping seal. So we vet every partner we work with. Uh, we spend a lot of time. These are built from ground up. And um, so we get to put it in front of you and take you from home to the airport, off you go. And you don't have to worry about it. Food, food, drink, activities are all included. The, the um, one final point on the airline element is you mentioned the commodity business with Frontier. And right. um, you know, you've taken what is not only the time period of it, but you've turned that commodity into an experience in and of itself. So I think that's really ingenious. Um, you mentioned membership model, and I saw a little bit of that on the website. You're developing chapters in each of these cities. Um, once somebody becomes a member of the organization, what does that entitle them to? This is exclusive access to various trips, and how do, how do the two play together? Well, the two play together is one immediate and one future evolution. And the immediate is if you join uh, what we've done is you as a member can invite three guests on any one of the trips you want to go on. Uh, we've purposely set the dues at a very, very low level. It's 2500 a year. That provides you that access. And, you know, our goal is that ultimately we put together these trips that is at a price point commensurate with what you could do on your own, going direct, building this all together and flying commercial, albeit in business or first class. So from a price point, that's our goal. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think the, the, the piece, uh, again, we ask ourselves every day is, are we doing something that you couldn't do on your own? And some of these things you can do on your own. It requires a lot of logistical planning, requires a lot of time. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's really what our focus. Those aha moments don't have to be a travel to Italy, a trip to New Zealand. Those aha moments can happen within two, two and a half hours. So it's all about the memories, all about the experience. And then ultimately we believe strongly that we'll be able to, uh, to deliver that to the, to the members. Okay. Now, um, the, the journeys that you've planned thus far, heavy domestic going forward, obviously, for obvious reasons, uh, I would anticipate that as situations change and borders open back up again, you'll also have some international journeys built into this? We, that's, a, that's a great question. So um, the answer is yes. The model changes a little bit different. So part of the reason we fly within two, two and a half hours is economic and the price point that we can offer to our members. But when you fly from Denver to London, say, on a private aircraft, we are back to dealing with only the top half of 1%. It's very expensive. But with that said, we are exploring ways that we'll be, off, uh, be able to offer uh, international travel there will be a subtle difference well maybe a big difference but uh, it would include probably commercial travel only in first class or business class but it's something that uh, is very uh, well of great interest to me um, you know domestic focus initially for us by the way was always the deal so it has nothing to do with uh, a response to COVID but uh, ultimately, we would love to have that buffet of offerings, uh, not to complicate the business, but just to serve the different interests of what is likely going to be a very diverse membership. Sure, sure. Okay. Oh, I, I could see this uh, doing very well in the Caribbean, Central America, Canada, yeah. you know, that aren't the, the seven hour plane journey, right, right. Uh, but still, you know, being able to hit some spots. So um, I, again, really impressed by that. Um, what do you anticipate to be your average group sizes on departures? Um, that's another important uh, question. Our target is six to eight people. Um, you know, the kind of the secret sauce of what we do Jeff or part of it 
is what we do is we develop a trip, say from our Denver chapter. We are chapter based and I can explain why, but we are chapter based and let's say we take a group golf and whitewater rafting in Jackson, Wyoming. And what we do is we develop that trip. We are asset light. We don't own or operate the aircraft, but we have very strict requirements to have uh, that we have with our aviation partners. They're all part 135. They've all made, uh, met safety and regulatory uh, compliance hurdles. So, you know, we vet them completely. But for instance, if you have a flying company and you have a four seat Honda jet and Jeff Potter is flying service, I have an eight seat Citation 10. What we do is we develop the trip, we put it out to bid to the operators. And if you come back with a cheaper price on a four seat aircraft on a per member or a per seat basis, we will actually select that aircraft versus the larger aircraft. So we are not trying to sell the most, we are trying to optimize each trip. So that's one dynamic that really is not done today. I can give you story after story back in my frontier days where, you know, we would have a, an Airbus A319 going from Denver to LA and two days out, I could see there's 30 people booked on it. Thankfully it didn't happen often, but I would sit there and say, gosh, I wish I could just scale up and scale down the capacity. Well, we've kind of, we've done that. And so, uh, and that's another reason, one of those subtleties, but important reasons that, our flights are two, you know, approximately two hours away from home because even if it's a four seat aircraft, we want comfort to be a major component of the offering. And so it's just a dynamic that is really new to this sector. So one final question for you. Um, you've had the opportunity to be involved in a number of successful ventures in the right. airline and the resort business. Um, in starting this new venture, what surprised you most? Um, what surprised me most is... <laughs> That's how the world goes these days. Oh my gosh. Uh, I think what surprised me most is... The good is been the reception, albeit uh, qualitative nature, but you know, the announcement went out yesterday. We've been testing the waters in numerous ways. We've been testing our member acquisition process just to make sure we were in tune with our assumptions. But I think what surprised me the most is that there's such a yearning, and this again is pre and existing atmosphere we find ourselves in is that there is a niche here that just has not been filled. Um, you know, I think a lot of times when people uh, evaluate businesses and there's an aviation component, you know, the light bulb goes off and means logistically intensive, uh, complex, and it really is not. I mean, now part of that comes from some of the backgrounds my team has, which is commercial aviation. So, um, this, these are things that uh, we think about often. Um, so the reception has been fantastic. The, uh, I think the challenge that we find ourselves in, this is all about uh, member acquisition. Um, I think what we find ourselves in the leisure travel segment is we get all combined, globbed together. So when you explain what Manifest does, um, people immediately think, well, isn't that what so-and-so does? Or isn't that what so-and-so does? I mean, there are travel companies out there that partner with private aviation. We're different. And, you know, when I mentioned we're chapter-based, we're chapter-based for numerous reasons. One is that whole like-minded concept. So being chapter-based, uh, all our members, you have one thing in common. And that is you live in the same geographical area. So if it's our Denver chapter, we all live in Denver, we're familiar with the sporting scene, the cultural scene, et cetera. So we already have something that uh, allows us to communicate as people who think alike. Two, by virtue of joining the club, you obviously have an interest in what we're attempting to do. 
And then third, by virtue of the specific flights you take, uh, is another filter. So it kind of has this little waterfall effect that cleanses through the rocks and says, you know, you and I are traveling together. Well, we have three things in common. And nine times out of 10, if not 99 out of 100 times, you're going to find out that that's a great filtering system. The other reason we do chapter-based, uh, quite honestly, goes back to the model. That allows us to fly from, we're not selling a destination, we're selling an origination, that local chapter, to a point and back. That allows us to get better pricing on the private aviation side, and it just further enhances the overall experience. You know, one of the things that I said, you know, uh, on the benefit side, some of it's evolutionary. And, you know, our goal is to put the pedal to the metal because the social aspects of what we're doing can be so, so powerful. In other words, there's no reason that you and I travel on a trip together. We never see each other talk together. My goal is, and I've seen it happen very well at some of my previous stops, where that's the cohesiveness that really long-term builds the company. Because it's gonna come, you know, we want referrals. That's the best new members that we can have. They come from people who've already experienced what we do. They feel confident in what we do. And so they share it with their friends, family, and sure. potentially business partners. Yeah, and, and they start traveling together in pods. That is the cause for uh, rebooking together and continuing that. So yeah, that's it's, that's very smart. Um, I, I said one final question before, but I actually have one more for you. Um, aspirationally, where do you think um, you know? Again, we're let's let's fast forward a couple of years, and we're in an environment that's conducive to traveling, and people feel a lot better about it. Um, aspirationally. How many trips are you guys capable of handling or where, where do you project this out? Well, I mean, from a market size, uh, we've spent a lot of time uh, going through the major metropolitan markets in the U.S. So we've identified 60 markets. Um, and none of them would surprise you. Uh, but what we've also done is done this filtering system that... Uh, you know, here's the average household income. Um, here's how it compares to uh, the median. We actually, as you know, there's a lot of data out there. We find out who spends uh, money on travel. So they already have that, that theme of they get it, they want to get away. Um, we use uh, international travel as kind of one of our filters. So we've identified all those markets. Uh, for us, it's a matter of prioritization. So we've identified, you know, the LA Basin, Denver, and the San Francisco Bay Area as our first three. Well, we already have the next three, we have the next three, nine, 12 identified. Um, but what's interesting is if you go to our site, um, you can join uh, as a member in the first three chapters. Uh, and you can join as a waitlist member in the, uh, in the remaining. So you're going to see, you'll see a drop down and you can join because it is first come, first serve. Um, you know, maybe one thing that I thought a little bit differently about COVID was we have capped membership to only 175 members per city. And so, um, you know, it's important that even if you live in New York, you live in Chicago, uh, it's $500 to join that wait list. And again, one of the thought processes we've had with COVID is uh, neither you or I can predict what a month or two months looks like. Um, we, we can all be hopeful, but hope is not a strategy. And so what we're doing is to make it easy on people is listen, join as a member in those first three markets or join the wait list. And you know what? after six months you haven't booked a trip or we haven't uh given you firm notice of when we start in chicago um you know it's fully refundable uh, we we don't want to hold on to people's money if they don't want to be part of what we're doing so uh, we recognize that that was an important offering so um you know we'll see where it goes but what i really really like jeff is I'm probably, because of my background, more comfortable flying than most. Uh, but I think traveling these small groups, traveling 
by private air, traveling with like-minded people, traveling, you know, through private terminals. We, we do a lot of avoidance that I think it demonstrates that it is safer. You know, I'm, I'm one that says we'll do what we can. We want everybody to feel comfortable. But at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, we're not going to push you to take a trip that you aren't fully engaged with and fully excited about. And that includes the health environment we find ourselves in. Exactly. And I think that one day we will be past that. And, and oh, when, you start, when you start unpeeling layers of it, what you're doing is creating an environment that once people experience it, they're not going to want to go back to traveling the normal way and, and right. uh, in, in that environment. So I really think you're onto something. I'll look forward to following this process as you bring right. the tours together. So uh, perhaps we can reconvene at a later date, but I'm super excited about what you're doing. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, we need bright minds in the industry. So I'm happy to have you aboard here.